The next set of notes on kingdom animalia is about uh, the last two um, phyla of animals, that's the echinoderms and the chordates. Both of them are deuterostomes, whereas the other groups that we talked about were all protostomes. That means deuterostome, remember, means that the blastopore becomes the anus rather than the mouth, as it does in the protostomes. A conoderm means spiny skin, and this includes the starfish, the sea cucumber, sea lilies, and sea urchins. Um, <clears throat> this is the fact that they're deuterostomes that makes them unique along with the chordates because they're the only groups that have that. They have a, a larva called a bipinaria larva. It's bilateral, but the adults have radial symmetry. So the bilateral larva um, develops into radial adults, and most of the echinoderms um, exhibit what we call five-part radial symmetry. What this means is the body parts are usually in multiples of five. And remember, radial sim in uh, organisms with radial symmetry, the body parts repeat around the center, and it can be divided into any number of different uh, segments based on, you know, from the center to the edge, as opposed to bilateral, where you've got two mirror image sides. Uh, here are some various pictures of echinoderms. This is a sea star, as the typical kind of starfish that you would normally see in the ocean. This particular one here is called a brittle star. The legs break off real easily from that center part there. Here's, of course, a sea urchin. We saw some sea urchin skeletons um, in class the other day, but this is the, the living sea urchin with the spines that stick out there. And this is called a feather star or a sea lily. Uh, very different. These are sessile, whereas the others move around. Uh, echinoderms are carnivores, herbivores, and filter feeders, depending on what their species is, what different group they belong to. A lot of the ones that we think about, the, the um, starfish, are um, usually carnivores. And the, um, the uh, sea urchins are oftentimes herbivores, and their filter feeders would be the sea, sea lilies and feather stars. <clears throat> so how do they get their food? Well, they have something called a water vascular system. The water vascular system is real different, and it has all these little feet on it called tube feet that allow them to move on, and they're kind of like a series of tiny little suction cups that are controlled by water, and um, and so they can suction, they can they have grip on things real easily, and open open shells and things like that because they're very very strong. Their excretion is taken care of by diffusion. Um, they don't have blood in its circulatory system; it's just strictly water, but it does allow for nutrients to be diffused around inside the body. And the nervous system, they don't have a brain, but they do have a nerve ring with radial nerves that run down the arm. In fact, all of the of the parts of the circulatory system and the nervous system and so forth um, go down each of the arms of the, um, of the animal. It, this diagram shows you the water vascular system. It's used for movement and for feeding, and it's basically a hydraulic system with these little tube feet that are controlled by water pressure in the tubes and they're little tiny suction cups. You don't have to know a whole lot about the structure here. We will uh, label a diagram uh, in your packet, and a lot of these tubes, the, the, a lot of these terms that are shown here on this slide will be ones that you label. So if you are not in class when we label it, you can refer back to this slide and pause it here so that you can um, label some of the uh, parts of the starfish on the diagram that's in your packet. Uh, the next phylum and the final phylum of animals is phylum chordata. These are also deuterostomes, and this is the phylum that we belong to. Most of the members of phylum chordata are vertebrates, although there are some that are not vertebrates, but they have some characteristics in common. Okay, and this is a, a picture of a generalized um, chordate um, that shows you uh, the parts that they have in common. All chordates have a dorsal hollow nerve cord with a brain at one end and then the, and then the nerve cord extending down the length of the body. They all have a notochord or supporting structure that supports that nerve cord. They have pharyngeal slits, which in some are gills and others are develop into gills and some others develop into other parts of the body. And then they have a post-anal tail. That's something that they all have in common with each other as well as muscle segments along in the tail and so forth. So we'll talk about these characteristics as we go along. Um, <clears throat> This is what you need to write down in your notes. These are the characteristics that are unique to phylum chordata. The notochord is a dorsal, dorsal cartilage rod. Remember, dorsal is the upper surface of an animal. And in vertebrates, this is what becomes the vertebra or the backbone. 
the dorsal column nerve cord with anterior brain is a really important uh, part that's the, one of the main things that characterizes chordates from other animals. The pharyngeal pouches are located along the throat and in fish and some, and, uh, some amphibians it becomes the gills. In other parts, uh, in other animals it becomes other parts of the head. In humans in particular, the pharyngeal pouches actually, where pharyngeal pouches in the embryo actually develop into the bones in your inner ear. And then a post-anal tail. All of these characteristics have to be present in chordates at some point in their life. In some animals, they're only found in the embryo stage. So like in humans, we don't currently have a postanal tail, but as embryos we did, and we saw that when we looked at the embryos or comparison of embryos when we talked about evolution. Other traits that chordates have, they have kidneys for excretory function. Uh, that filter, that are very efficient filters of um, nitrogen waste and other kinds of compounds from, um, from the uh, bloodstream. And then the brain and dorsal hollow nerve cord are really important structures. And then, of course, the, uh, the main part of phylum chordata is the vertebrates that have a vertebral column. And we'll spend, there'll be some more notes on the groups of vertebrates, uh, which includes fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. This completes the notes on the phyla of animals. Um, there are some worksheets um, on, there's a worksheet in your packet that is the um, starfish that you need to label, and we'll talk about that in class. And then there's some worksheets on um, animals that we'll talk about in one of an activity we'll do in class and some others that you can fill in as you go through the notes on the vertebrate classes.